Finally, I just had to go and find out. I thought, well, if this is of God, I'm going to find out. So I went up front, and I met you, and you prayed over Simon. And since then, God became more real to me personally. So your spiritual experience really... That is right. That is right. ...was so, a great miracle to you. You never a had a spiritual experience like that before. Never. And so I became very hungry to read the scriptures. The Bible became very real. God is real. He is alive. And so as I started reading in the scriptures and in the gospels, the, the words just jumped off the pages and, and became real in me, alive. And this was a joy. Sure. Simon was not healed. We couldn't understand this. We thought that, you know, what, we thought it was going to be his day that day. Nothing happened. But, you know, the Lord found us. He, he never lets us down. That is right. That's one thing we can depend on. And the amazing thing is that when Simon was healed, he was healed at home, and you and your wife were in the Shrine Auditorium. That, to me, is such a beautiful evidence of his power because that takes Catherine Kuhlman out of it entirely. See, I have nothing to do with these healings. And the fact that he was healed at home, you and your wife in the Shrine Auditorium, did you come praying for him that Sunday? Yes, we, we did. We felt very bad that particular day. This was in February of 1970. But before that, I want to take you back yet, if I may, to December. December was a, a critical period because uh, the doctor had decided that there might be a drug, a new experimental drug that, that they didn't know the outcome of, but they might want to try this on Simon. So uh, we prayed that this would not be necessary because the side effects were not very favorable and uh, they were not at all sure that this drug would happen. So we just simply prayed that the Lord would just show something to the doctors that he did not have to take this drug. And sure enough, in December, when Simon went for his visit to the doctor, there were three doctors there, and all three of them agreed that there was some improvement. And to us, this was a sign. And so we knew, in fact, my wife would go around and tell some intimate friends that the Lord would heal Simon. So in February, Simon was very ill that day. He was in pain. Uh, he would have uh, spasms in his muscles, in his arms and in his legs, uh, very similar to when a person, you know, has a, has a spasm in his, in his leg and his toe stands up. And this is very painful. And so he had to stay home. And we came to the meeting and we said, well, if it be your will, Lord, take him. But if it is your will, then go ahead and heal him. Not our will, but your will be done. And when we came home, as we left, he was in pain. And as we came home, he was playing ball at home. And he hasn't had any pain since. None. Mr. DeRee, you are telling me that when you got to the place where we became so yielded to the will of God, that you were willing to say, either heal him or take him. That is right. That is correct. That is correct. It was then that God heard your prayer. That is right. And your son was not healed in the shrine. No, he was at home. Well, honey, and you're that young man that your daddy's been talking about all this time. You mean to tell me, honey, that when your daddy and mama got home from the shrine auditorium, you were playing ball? Yes. Were you shocked? We were, we, could, we couldn't believe it at first. You know, we, we just had to believe it. And we, we were just in awe. And when you left him at home, he was in such intense pain. 
That is right. I guess these spasms are, are um, no one knows the pain. That is right. We, uh, he would have uh, drugs to kill the pain, but this would just not be enough. And tell again, what did your son have? What was it the diagnosed name, as? The name of the disease is scleroderma. And there is no cure for it? Absolutely none. There's no cure known to man for it. And that is what you were told? That's right. And yet, when you got home from the shrine, he had not been there. No one laid hands on him. It was just the power of God that healed your son. That's right. It's a miracle. That's right. All right, you're a scientist. You tried for days and days to try to analyze it. All right, how do you account for it now? I just stand in awe and... I just thank God for what happened. There's no way one can explain this. You cannot explain God, the creator of the universe. It is impossible for man. His ways are not our ways. And when it happens to your own son, it makes all the difference in the world. That is right. You never dreamed that these you never dream that a disease like this could come. Upon your son. No. And yet it. Did. What would you say to other parents? When they feel, as you said a moment ago. you felt as though the rug had just been pulled from under you. I think to... For some people, uh, the only way is through this type of an experience. For us, it was. This was the only way back for us to God. That's right. And what it has done to you and your wife is even a far greater miracle than that which has happened to your son. That is correct. This is real. What we're talking about is as real as God himself. Do you understand? Nothing is hopeless with God. Absolutely nothing. You may feel as though that condition is absolutely hopeless. Men and women only think that things are hopeless. Nothing is hopeless as long as God is still on his throne and still answers prayer. And it isn't a beautiful prayer that has to be prayed. It's that simple prayer. Oh, Simon, come. Stand by me. Here he is. Always remember him. The little boy with the freckles for whom God performed a miracle. And what God did for young Simon, he'll do for your child. He'll do for your son. He'll do for your daughter. God answers daddies and mamas and little boys prayers <laughs> Catherine Kuhlman has presented another in the series of inspirational telecasts, I Believe in Miracles. Perhaps today's program has been the means of awakening your spiritual interest, but you have questions, problems needing experienced counsel. Miss Kuhlman would be happy to hear from you, pledging her individual attention. Simply write Catherine Kuhlman, Post Office Box 3, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. All letters are treated in strict confidence. I Believe in Miracles comes to you each week at this same time under the auspices of the Katherine Kuhlman Foundation.
This is Art Gilmore speaking.